What's up everybody? Um before I start this video, the band you are about to I'm about to review is called Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses is not a glam metal band and shit like that. Just wanted to put it out there. Okay, now I'm about to start the music. Yeah, <clears throat> and another announcement, um, I am definitely going to get my web camera this week, so I will make videos longer than Roseanne's comeback, so stay tuned for that, and basically, oh Jesus fucking God, okay, this is Guns N' Roses' debut album, Appetite for Destruction, released in 1987 on Geffen Records. And yes, this Wi-Fi wants to mess up now. Okay. Yeah, um, Guns N' Roses. Um, you know, you guys should know who Guns N' Roses are. <clears throat> um, the members include Axl Rose, Easy Stradlin, Duff McKagan, Slash, and Steven Adler. Um, singles albums known for are It's So Easy, Welcome to the Jungle, which is playing in the background ironically. Um, Sweet Child of Mine and Paradise City and Night Train. Alright. Producers is Mike Clink produced this whole album and shit like that. Um, you know, he worked with groups like White Snake, Motley Crue, um, I believe Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know who Guns N' Roses are, they are um, a hard rock metal group that originated from Los Angeles, California. Um, originally, hold on. Okay. Um, so originally Izzy and Azel, Axel were in a band together and you know they were like the closest ones out of the group. So fast forward to 1985, um, they formed a group basically, they formed a group and shit like that and they used, they formed a new group called Guns N' Roses. And the reason why they called it the group Guns N' Roses was because just to combine the names of like the previous groups that some of the members were in at the time, like the LA Guns and I believe like the Hollywood Roses, something like that if I'm saying it right. Um, so they performed at a show and shit like that and the original bassist Oral Beach was replaced by Duff and shit like that. And, you know, um, they were, um, you know, they were still having some personal changes and they put out a demo of, of such. No, original put out a demo, but, um, they had, like, some problems with, like, some of the members and shit. And so that's when Slash came into picture, basically, and he replaced the guitarist, um, Tracy Guns. And uh, Rob Garner, he quit, and he was replaced by Steven Adler from the Hollywood Roses. <coughs> and so that's how the members of Guns N' Roses formed. You know, they were playing in some of the Hollywood clubs and shit like that. And they got discovered. They got discovered by um, somebody from Geffen Records. And they got some $75,000 to do a dem an EP and shit like that. Cause they turned down, they were originally signed to Chrysler's Records, but they turned it down because Geffen had like the bigger deal, and they granted them more artistic freedom. So December of '86, they dropped the EP, Life, Live Like a Suicide, 
which I want to talk about that when I review GNR Li GNR Live. So then the next year they came out with this album and shit, and that EP was popular as well, as well too. Now this was actually the original cover of the album, and you can, you can tell because it featured I think like a girl getting raped by like a robot or some shit. Yeah. And of course, you guys should know they remastered the album, I think a couple months ago. And these are like the lyrics of all the songs and shit. And yeah, I'm definitely going to review all of the album, all the Axel, the original member lineup, up to Spaghetti Incident. So, yeah. So now we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 songs. You guys should know what I'm about to do. Track number one, Welcome to the Jungle, um, iconic song, everybody should know that song. That song, um, Axel wrote while he was visiting in Seattle, basically. Um, very, very grimy song, very dark song, very nice way to start off the album. Track number two, It's So Easy, another dope song right there, um, from an interview I read, they said that this song was originally supposed to be an acoustic song called Hippie Ya Ya, but it, Slash wanted to turn it into a rock song basically, and um, definitely that's a good choice because It's So Easy, that's definitely one of my favorite songs off the album. But my only gripe, that song is not on Spotify, which I don't understand why it's not, so I don't know, but who knows. Um, next song, The Night Train is basically a tribute to um this wine called night train express and it was very popular back in like the west coast in california and shit and so yeah that's a very good cool song there you got out to get me um pre-rebellious song and shit like that that's a very angry song they all did a thing on that but axel's like anger axel Vocals on that one was really what stood out to me and shit. Track number next track, Mr. Brownstone. Very dope song. Um, you guys should know, in case you guys don't know what Brownstone is, it's basically um, heroin, basically. And shit like that. So, um, basically, because you know, um, the members, you know, they dabble into heroin. A couple of members are dabble into heroin. Um, I love the chemistry between Slash's guitar, Slash's guitar, and um, Steven's drums and shit like that. Like, Steven Adler, definitely, definitely a dope drummer. Very slept on, if you ask me, and shit. Um, next track, Paradise City. Another favorite track of mine. It's a very feel-good track. Like, you can play that song, like, when you're driving down the West Coast and shit. And, you know, Slash, it's like Slash's favorite song from Guns N' Roses as well. So, that's a very cool song. Oh, Jesus. Okay, sorry. Next song, um, My Michelle. Now, this is a very interesting... This is a very interesting song, uh, My Michelle. It's basically talking about this girl um, that was a friend of the band named Michelle and shit like that. So, Slash knew her through junior high and she was like, uh, from what I read, Slash is for his girlfriend. And so, what ended up becoming this song was they wanted to write a song about her and, um, Axel was listening to what's that song? Elton John's Your Your Song off his I believe his first album. And pretty much this is probably like their first attempt at a love song, basically. Um It's a very cool song, it's just like a very cool song. It's not like again, it's not like one of my favorite songs off the album, but it's still like a very interesting song because although although basically they would have had they had a very dope love song 
like later on in this album and shit like that. And the Use the Illusion album will have a good amount of certain love songs and shit. So I felt like this was a pretty good prototype. Not too sentimental, but not too hard at the same time. If that makes sense. Next song, Think About You. Um, that's a very okay song. Steve Lashford. Yeah. Think About You, very um okay song. Um, next song, um, Sweet Child of Mine. This might come to a surprise, but this is probably my favorite song off this album. Um, yeah, actually, because this is a song I had like a lot of memories lis- listening to this growing up and shit like that. And it's kind of crazy too because originally this song was not supposed to come to be because of the fact that Slash was just playing with a guitar with as a joke and Axel heard it and he was writing a song and so he kind of put two and two together and because you know um, Slash he said he didn't really like the song at first but then over the years he come to like it so very dope song i love the lyrics off the song like this is how you do a love song without sounding sentimental sound sound cheesy and shit like that if, if you're doing a hard rock and shit and i'm gonna get more into that when i finish with this album basically next song you're crazy um yeah that song was okay ne- next song anything goes which is like a guitar driven song very sick song right there. That's a very slept on song. I don't hear many Guns N' Roses fans talk about though, but um, then last song is Rocket Cream. <laughs> okay, so this infamous song um, basically it's a very interesting song because according to Axel um she wrote this for this chick, basically, that, basically, that he was seeing and shit like that, and so, uh, <clears throat> I believe from what I've read, there's like a lot of different stories when it comes to this, there's a lot of different stories that come to this shit, because there, there were rumors that the girl that Axel was kind of doing on his song was Steven Adler's girlfriend, but Steven kind of like, di- kind of like down, declined that. He said, oh, no, that's not my girl, basically. Um, she just went to the mixing and basically Axel wanted to have sex with her on the bridge and shit. So... But then, like, over the years, like, people have been saying that that is the girl, that Steven's on and off girlfriend and shit, so... It's a very interesting story, but overall, Rocket Cream, very dope song, nice way to end off the album, and that's all the time I have for this album. Overall, classic album right here, this is a very good album, highly recommended. This came out at a time when like glam metal was at its peak and a lot of people kind of characterize Guns N' Roses as glam metal which I kind of feel is very biased because of the fact that you know they had long hair, they were from California, all that shit but they were really talking about some grimy shit like more grimier than Motley Crue and shit um and Glam metal, I like certain glam metal artists, but I'm not like the biggest glam metal head and shit, but other than that, very dope song, like this is altogether the great, their greatest album in my opinion, like probably one of rock music's best debut albums as well, and this is actually one of the best selling albums in their, this is best, one of the best selling albums of all time, and their best selling album in their career, so yeah. Very good album and shit like that, and I'm definitely gonna like, you know, talk about the discography more and shit like that, cause you know a lot of people kind of want to be like, Appetite for Destruction is like their only best album, which I kind of had to disagree on that, because yeah, stay tuned on that, but overall, 
very, very good album. Must have in your collection. And as usual, this is your boy Reg. Peace. And by the time you guys see me, I might have this webcam. So I decided just to get that review out of the way because I was meaning to do that review for about two weeks now, but I just been so busy. So yeah, you guys have a good night. Peace.